I don't know if you saw this commercial, but it's kind of funny and it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm just going to play part of it for you here. The basic idea, it's a bunch of these people from Paramount Plus, and they're trying to escape. I don't know why. And Tua Tagalavoya throws his grappling hook up to try to get it, and they can't They can't make it. That's all you need to see. And it's funny. I mean, because it got everyone in there, and it's just pretty funny. Okay, but you should watch it. I'll put a link down below. But the thing is, I want to be able to model the motion of this grappling hook. And I did an analysis of this, of how high the clip was and all that stuff. I posted that on my Medium blog. But I really just want to model the motion of a grappling hook. Because if you throw a ball up, then, yeah, we can model that with just constant acceleration. But but what do you do with the halves of that string? So as it goes higher, it's going to pull that string up. And there was a great physics teacher article about this. But uh, let's just start from the very beginning. I want to start and model the motion of a ball with no string. Uh, just so we can have a comparison and then we'll go to the string and then we'll do it even better okay so and this is this is not you know super useful for a lot of cases but imagine that i throw a ball straight up with a velocity v0 and it's going to be a one-dimensional problem there's a downward gravitational force mg uh, and so i could write the net force in the y direction as negative mg no surprise there, right? Okay. Now, uh, how do I model the motion? And there's a lot of different ways. But let's say that I break this into small time step of 0.01 seconds. Uh, during that time interval, I can assume that the motion, that the force is constant. Because this is going to give me mass times acceleration. So I get an acceleration of negative g. Okay. So I, have, I assume that's constant because it is. Not a big deal. Uh, and then from that, I can use the definition of acceleration as the change in velocity with respect to time. And this is just in the y direction. And that's going to be v2 minus v1 over delta t, or v2 is v1 plus a delta t, where a is negative g. Okay, so this is, I'm going through this fast because we've got a lot more stuff to do. Uh, but I can update the velocity. That's the velocity at the beginning of the interval and the end. And then I can do the same thing with the definition of velocity change in y with respect to time, y2 minus y1 over delta t. So y2 equals y1 plus v delta t. So number one, calculate the acceleration. Number two, update the velocity. Number three, update the position. Do it all over again. Okay, so let's put this in Python because this will be our base. And then we're gonna do it again with the, with the rope. So I'm switching back over here to Python. And yes, you will get the code. Uh, so number one, I want to graph this. Um, I'm just going to make a graph right now. And this is, I'm not going to make a visual model, even though I should. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just make a, a graph. So graph G1 equals graph. That's not big enough. There, that's better. G1 equals graph uh, title equals Tua grappling hook. Uh, x title, I want to plot the y position as a function of time. So x title is t in seconds. y title is y in meters. And then I need to do a width of 400. Nope, 400. Height of 200. Nope. And then uh, that's that. So then f, let's put this f g for just g it's going to be a g curve and color equals color dot purple i'm just starting i know i always start with blue but today i'm starting with purple i have my g value right there let me just put uh gg as uh 9.8 that that's the magnitude of it that's why i want to do this l is the length of my string i put some stuff in here just because i want to I uh, do it. And then my initial velocity is zero and print one is print one. I just did that for nothing else. Uh, so I'm going to put some initial variables. Y equals zero. V equals 20. I'm going to use the same value. Uh, T equals zero. DT equals 0 0.01. And oh, no, no. Uh, and then let's just run this for two seconds uh, just to make it easy. While T is less than two, rate 100. because that's going to do 100 calculations per second. Um, so number one, calculate the acceleration. When we don't need to do that because it doesn't change. So I can just update the velocity. V equals V. Uh, I'm going to change all these to twos. Two, two. Yeah, because I, I'm going to, um, 
I'm going to do it again. I need to, I want that other one to be 1. So V2 uh, plus can be minus G times dt, Y2 equals Y2 uh, plus V2 times dt, T, and let's plot it, F, Fg dot plot, T, Y2, T equals T plus dt. So this is a good base, right? And if this doesn't work, I'm going to be very disappointed with myself because uh, I should be able to do this quite easily. And I'm disappointed with myself. Good job. Cannot subtract a scalar and a vector. I did. I know what I did. I put that G. At least it gave me a useful feedback. There we go. Okay, so this is just tossing up a up a up a ball, right? Parabola, no no magic right there. But now, what happens if I want to throw it with a rope? That's what we need. Okay, let's get a different equation for that and model it. So I'm going back to the paper. Oh, that got wet. Okay. So, imagine that I have my ground right here. And I throw a, a ball. It's my, it has a mass of my hook. And then there's a rope. And so the rope moves up. And we don't have to worry about sideways motion, stuff like that. So this has a position of Y. And let's say this has a linear mass density, lambda. And that's going to be... This is the total length L for the whole rope. So this is going to be the mass of the rope divided by the length of the rope. It's the linear density. So that means that uh, if this is my motion, it has some velocity moving up. But what's the force? Well, the force depends on the mass, and the mass of the piece moving up changes. So we can say the total mass, m total, is going to be the mass of the hook plus the mass of this part of the rope. There's no gravity. There is a gravitational force on this part, right? But there's also a normal force in that, so we don't have to worry about that. So this can be lambda times y. That's the total mass of my thing. Now I can use the momentum principle. I can't use Newton's second law because I'm going to deal with a non-constant mass. So the momentum principle in the y direction says F net equals dp dt and this is just a scalar version because I'm just in the y direction so p is going to be the mass total times the velocity so and that's my mass total and f net is going to be equal to uh, negative mg so let's put in our stuff so I have negative mg equals the derivative with respect to time of the momentum which is going to be the mass which is this uh, mh plus lambda y times the velocity v. And then I need to put in my mass right there too. So let's say negative mh plus lambda y, that's my mass, times g equals the derivative of this. So let's take the derivative of this. So, um, we have a, a product here, right? I have to take the derivative of this times that plus the derivative of this times that. So this piece right here, that's a constant. So the derivative of this is, is just going to be the derivative of lambda y. So I get the derivative of that 0, and this is all times v, v times 0 plus lambda, 0 times plus lambda times the derivative of y, which is v, right? Because the derivative of, the y, derivative of y with respect to t is v. Now I need to take the derivative of v times all that stuff. So I get plus mh plus lambda y times the derivative of v, which is going to be a. So you see I get this extra term in here because I'm dealing with the changing momentum. Uh, let's solve this for a. So I get uh, a times mh plus lambda y equals, uh, I'm going to subtract that from both sides, so negative mh negative plus lambda y g minus lambda v squared, and then divide both sides by that, and I get the acceleration. Negative mh plus lambda y g minus 
lambda v squared, all of that over mh plus lambda y. And maybe we should just do a really quick check, right? Because if what if the, the linear density lambda is 0? Then it, we should just get an acceleration of negative g. So if that's 0, that term goes away. These two terms cancel, and I, I do get that. So that's a good sign that it's at least partially legitimate. But now I can model this, right? Because now I have a non-constant acceleration. I can model this um, by calculating the acceleration in each time interval and then using that acceleration to find the new velocity and the new position. So let's add that in there. I'm going to make another plot. I'm going to do this. And wait, if you think this is crazy, it's not crazy because it's going to get crazy. Okay. Okay. So going back over here to the computer. Hello, computer. Okay, so I need another graph. Let's call this F1. G curve, color, color equals color dot blue. And uh, I have my linear mass density. I have my length of this thing, which doesn't really matter until, you know, once I get Y greater than L, then it doesn't have just projectile motion. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, v0, y2, so I need y is 0, and then I need v is 20. I don't know why I put that v0 in there. Okay. So now down here, I have my other calculation. I'm going to calculate my acceleration, right? So, oh, do I have the mass of the hook? I have lambda. Okay, so the mass, the acceleration is going to be negative. Uh, there's double parentheses. Negative mh plus lambda times y minus lambda times v squared. All that divided by mh plus lambda times y. Now I can use that to update my velocity. v equals v plus a times dt. Right? Because that now I have to do that because the acceleration is changing. And then I update my position. Uh, y equals y plus v times dt, and then I can plot it, f1.plot ty. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the blue one is the grappling hook, and you'll see that it doesn't go as high. That makes sense. If ooh. Well, that's weird. A is negative. Well, let's put lambda as 0 and see what happens. See, that's not right. It should. So there's a problem with my equation. Um, A, ne I'm looking at my thing, negative mh plus lambda times, oh, g. Okay. Better. Okay. So the grappling hook doesn't go as high. That makes sense, right? Because you're you're throwing it up with the same initial velocity, but now it's got all that mass that's pulling down with it. And that's pretty cool. Um, but what if I want to throw it at an angle? Right? If I want to throw it at an angle, it's a much harder problem. Uh, we're going to model this. So let me jump over to the paper and see why this is such a hard problem if you throw it at an angle. Imagine that you want to do the same thing, right? I want to do the same thing and model the motion at an angle. And I think you can do it. Um, I'm not going to, but I think you could do it, right? Because the problem now is as this uh, gets launched up, and there's my string L, well, this L is not going to be in a straight line because this is moving uh, and it's going to accelerate these different masses horizontally too. So you have a horizontal equation that's very similar. And I think maybe you could technically do it now that I'm thinking about it. But if you launch it at a velocity V0, then it gets a little tricky. So, but what I want to do is to just make a rope. I want to make a rope in Python, okay? So here's what my rope is going to look like. And then here's my grappling hook. It's a little bit bigger. 
So my rope is going to consist of a bunch of tiny little masses, and all these masses will be connected by a spring. And then what I can do is to, if I throw this up, and this is y equals zero, uh, what, I, what I will say is that only once this mass gets above y equals zero, then there's a gravitational force on it. But there's a, a spring force between these two things. So how do we calculate the spring force between two masses, and how do we make this whole thing? Well, suppose I make this whole chain of, of balls, uh, and there's a spring constant k. Uh, there needs to be a delta L, or I called it dL. It's the length between the, the unstretched length between two masses. And then I can calculate this vector. I'll call this uh, R12 or something like that. Uh, and that will be the, the vector position between these two. So if this length is different than that length, then there will be a, a force pulling or pushing, right? I should only have pulling, but uh, it pushes too. And so I can calculate that force as F12 as K times DL minus the magnitude, I was writing in Python, uh, R12. And that will give me a scalar value. That's the spring force, K times the stretch. Uh, but I need to then also multiply it by the unit vector R12 so it makes this whole thing a vector. Because it does matter, right? As this thing moves up and the ball is down here, I want to pull down. I don't want to just calculate the force. Now, should this be positive or negative? That is something I always mess up uh, because it depends on the direction and things like that. So let's just, let's just see if we can, number one, make our balls. Okay, so we're going to use a bunch of Python stuff. We're going to have to make a list. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Okay, but I just want to make, uh, let's say, n equals 10 balls. I'm going to make a list of 10 balls. So what I'm going to do is start with one ball right here, and then I'm going to add the next ball, and I know the vector distance is just going to be, you know, dl is l over n. I need to move over dl, move over dl, move over dl, and put on my balls. So let's make some balls. It's going to be a bunch of fun. Okay, computer. Here we go. I'm going to add it to the same Python code so that we can just keep on doing it. So I have L. I have the lamb, lambda. I have N. I need N. N equals uh, 10 to start with something easy. Uh, I need the mass of each piece. I'll call it DM. It's going to be, uh, mm, let's do this. Mass of the rope is lambda times L. And then DM is going to be mass of the rope divided by N. That's the mass of each piece. I need a spring constant, k equals 1,000. I'm just going to pick that. Uh, but let's just go ahead and make our, our balls. And I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to add it to a list called uh, BS. So I, and if you're dealing with a lot of balls, I don't want to have to have a bunch of things I have to calculate. It's easier just to say it's in a list. So let's make a list of these balls. Um, so uh, for i in range n. So this will go through 0 to n. We'll have n pieces. And then it will call each one i. And then I can use that to, to make my balls. So let's make a temporary vector rt. I like rt as temporary vector. Uh, vector uh, negative i times dl. Did I get a dl? No. DL equals L divided by N. So that's going to give me my vector position, right, of each I, uh, thing. And then I can uh, zero, zero. So as I increase, I'm going to move more and more to the left. I'm going to have my string stretched out to the left. Now let's add a ball, BS equals BS plus a ball, which is just a sphere. Its position is going to be RT. Its radius it's going to be, let's say, L over 70. I'm just picking a value. And that's that. So we should have a list of balls. Let's see if it works. There's my balls. And there's, there's one. That one's going to turn into my grappling hook. But they're spread out evenly. And that looks great. I mean, if I want to make 100, I could. It's pretty easy. I'm going to go back to 10. But there's 100 balls, right? Pretty nice. Uh, let's go back to 10. Okay, now I need to set properties of those balls. 
Um, so let's just go through and set the property of each ball for B in BS. So this is going to go through the list B, S, and call each item B, right? So I already know their position. I need to set their mass. B dot M is going to be DM. Is that what I called it up there? Yep. Uh, B dot P, the momentum, they're going to start off with an initial momentum of zero. It's going to be DM let's say b dot m times vector zero, zero, zero. So I can't update the momentum if I don't know the momentum. And then finally, I'm gonna say b dot f equals vector zero, zero, zero. So b dot f, force is a property of an interaction between two things, but I'm gonna call b dot f the net force on f. And it's just the easier way to keep track of all the forces on the different things. Um, so that's that. Now what I'm gonna do is to make my grappling hook. So the grappling hook is going to be the first mass in there. I want to make it heavier and bigger and with a different momentum. Okay. So I can do that by just saying BS0. That's that first item in the list. Uh, let's make it bigger. Radius equals uh, L over 40. Let's give it a color yellow so we can see it. BS0.color equals color.yellow. Uh, let's give it a momentum on oh, a mass bs zero dot m equals mh and right there my total mass for my string is wrong now right because i've i've taken the total mass i spread it over 10 items and then i change that first 10 item but it shouldn't matter in the end i think we'll be okay so let's not worry about that and then finally let's put an initial momentum bs zero dot p equals uh, b at, this is called m h times vector zero v zero zero that's how fast i shoot it up okay let's run that okay so there's my my bigger mass this thing looks a little off let's see yeah that's better Okay, so now here we are. We have our time step, right, uh, down here. We're gonna go through, and that what we need to do is to calculate the force on each of those items, uh, and then we need to um, update the momentum of each of those items, and update the position of each of those items. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. And yet my, my string isn't connected. You can connect them if you want, but it doesn't really matter. So if you think about my string, uh, I have two special cases. The first is the case for the first mass, right? Because it only has one spring connected to it and also for the last mass. So let's deal with that first mass. Uh, I'm gonna define a vector. I'm gonna call it R10 and it's gonna be uh, BS1.POS minus bs0.pos. So that's the vector from one, from the first one to the second one. So I know that direction. Now I can use that to calculate the force. bs0, oh, did I put the force? Yeah, I did, okay. bs0.f equals negative k times dl minus magnitude of r10 times the unit vector norm R10. So that's my spring equation. There's my spring constant, that's my stretch, and that's my unit vector to make it in, into a thing. And I, I already tested it, so I know it should be negative, but I promise you I get that wrong all the time. And if you get it wrong, just flip the sign of it if you can't think about what it should be. Now let's go through all the, the other elements between the first and the last one. And we're gonna calculate the force. And so there's two forces. I'm not worried about gravity yet. There's just two forces on those, okay? Let's calculate the gravitational force on those other ones. And in fact, let's set uh, V0 to something small. Uh, V0 equals one for right now, because I, I, I'm just gonna move it with no gravity. Okay, so I got that. That's, that's all my other stuff. Uh, so I wanna go through my masses. So. I can't do for B and BS because I don't want to include those first two. And I want to be able to index the ones before and after. So let's do this. For I in range, one 
to n minus 1. So instead of going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth, I'm going to start at the number 1, and I'm not going to go to the end. I'm going to go to n minus 1. So I'm not going to do the first one because I'm starting at 1, not 0, and I'm not going to do the last one. Okay. Now I can calculate two vectors. R1 is going to, and these are generic, right? R1 is going to be the vector BSI, the ith element, dot POS, minus BSI minus 1, dot POS. So it's just like before. I'm, I need to find the vector to the next one and to the one that way. And let's call R2 uh, BSI plus 1. It's the one ahead of it, dot POS minus, oops, dot POS, minus BSI dot POS. So both those are going to find the two vectors to the next two pairs, and they all have a pair because I left off the first and the last one. Now I can calculate the force, BSI dot F. It's going to, there's two forces. It's going to be equal to K times DL, capital, minus mag R1, times norm R1, right? Just like before, that's my normal equation. And then this is going to be minus, because my vector is in the opposite direction, K times DL minus mag R2 times norm R2. Okay, so that's my, uh, that will go through and calculate all my forces on the stuff. Now I need to do the last one, so I'm going to call this RF for final, the final position is BS minus 1. So when you index, uh, when you reference a list, 0 is the first one, 1 is the second one, 2 is the third one, negative 1 is the last one. So it's going to be negative 1 dot POS, that's the last one, minus BS minus 2 dot POS. So again, I, I know I'm starting from the other end and I'm finding that, that vector. And then I can set the force, uh, BS minus 1 dot F equals, and this one's going to be positive, K times DL minus mag RF times norm RF. Not BORM, norm, norm RF. Okay, so they all should have a force now. What I can do is go through all my list of balls, including the grappling hook, because it's in the same list. I'm going to use their force to update their momentum, update their position. So let's do that. For B in BS, uh, update the momentum. B dot P equals B dot P plus B dot F times DT. Uh, update the position. B dot POS equals B dot POS plus B dot P times DT, I got to divide by the mass, B dot M, right? So the, that one that has a different mass is going to have a different thing. And then that's it, right? And then I go through the rest of the stuff and I plot things. But this should move it. Let's just see if it does. I should save it because I never save. I'm a bad saver. But let's save this and see if that works. Okay, so going really slow, I'm looking to see if those move. Yes, they do. Although we need to run this for a longer time. Uh, let's move it a little bit faster. V0 is, where did I put it? Let's put it at 10. And let's run this, no, it's fine. I mean, that's pretty awesome right there. There's no gravity, right? And you'll notice, why does the mass veer to the left? Well, as these mass starts pulling these along, they pull it back, right? Or you can think of it as the center of mass of the system should stay constant. Um, and so, you know, it started moving straight up, but all these were not moving, but it still had to have the center mass uh, not moving because there's no net force, or force. No, no, the center mass, the momentum should be constant. The center mass was already moving when I started it, okay? But now let's just add the gravitational force. So what I'm going to do is to say if the mass is greater than uh, y equals zero, then there's a downward gravitational force on that. Um, so down here, one of the things, I calculate the force right here. I calculate the force and I set it as a property. But I'm not adding to the force. So down here, after I've done that, now I can add the force. So oh, before I update the momentum. So let's just do another loop. 
um, for b in bs, if b.pos.y is greater than zero, then b.f equals b.f plus b.m times g. So that just adds the gravitational force. Okay, let's see if that actually works. We should have, and let's put this at 20 and run it. Hmm. It shouldn't go that far to the left. Let's do a smaller time step. Um, see if that fixes it. Why is it going so much to the left? It shouldn't do that. Uh, oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. Okay. I know what I did. No, I did it right there. Oh. Yeah. Huh. If, why? Okay, I have to resort to the thing I hate. I actually wrote this code beforehand. You know I do that right. Because I make a whole bunch of mistakes. I don't want to spend an hour trying to troubleshoot even though that can be kind of fun. Let me show you my other code over here and I'll fix this. Okay, so here I have the code. Let me make this one bigger. Um, I'm not sure what the difference here is. It looks pretty much the same, um, but but that's fine. Okay, so let's run this. I probably made a dumb mistake, and that's fine. And that one does pull to the left too. Huh. Well, that means my code might be okay. It shouldn't go to the left that much. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. Let's, I did plot. I made a plot. I'm, I think there's something wrong, but I made a plot of the vertical position as a function of time for those two uh, calculations, the theoretical and the analytical. And they're not exactly the same, and I think now because it's pulling to the left. Um, but they're close. I'm, I need to find my error. There's, there's got to be an error in there somewhere. Um, and you have the code. I'm going to give you the code. Maybe you can find the error too. But still, this idea of using a string as a bunch of masses connected together, notice they jiggle a lot. They jiggle a lot because there's no drag on them, right? Uh, once you start pulling it, then, then they can stretch like this. So I don't know if that's the problem, but it's definitely moving too far to the left. Um, let's plot... Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to just play around with this on my own, uh, but I think the idea is solid. But here's what this can do. Now I can launch it at an angle, right? So let's just launch this at an angle. I could do that by saying uh, up here or down here. Where do I make my, there's my launch velocity right here. Okay, let's give it, um, let's say this is V0 times cosine um, 45 times pi over 2 and this is going to be sine 45 times pi over 2. So I'm launching it at an angle. Let's just see. I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, that's not right. It still goes back. Hmm. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I think there's a great idea here. There's a problem with the code. I've already gone 30 minutes. So I'm going to play around with this. You play around with this. We can all play around with this. Find out what's going on. But the idea, I think, is pretty legitimate. And there you go. Grappling hook problems. The end. I don't get a double high five here because it didn't quite work. But I got pretty close. See you guys later.